climate change affect our lives. So they have to understand, they have to know, and they already know what kind of uh, changes we are experiencing around our uh, life. So uh, it's not just uh, the theories, but also it's our life. So they have to understand that they have to act on to change climate change uh, the the impacts. So good morning, uh, Professor Lee, and uh, thank you so much for granting us the opportunity to interview uh, Professor here in Simrip during the um, uh, ASEAN Plus 3 uh, Junior Student Odyssey, the 10th session in Cambodia right now, uh, Professor. Uh, Professor, uh, my first question to you is that, you know, behind me is more than 200 of young junior high schoolers from ASEAN from Korea, from China. So uh, why do you pick them at this age? Is it like the age that they learn, uh, you know, very greatly, they, they accelerate fast in the understanding of uh, environment? Uh, we chose uh, the middle school students, the junior high students, because they are starting their curiosity and their scientific understanding and scientific concept learning at this stage. So we think this uh, this is the right uh, age uh, right, for this right event age for them to step into uh, step the into the science scientific scientific inquiry as well as their like understanding and their action to the society. Why? Why uh, young generation? Why uh, the junior high, the junior uh, schooler? You know, they are our future. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they, it's time for them to explore. It's time for them to engage. It's time for them to expose. It's time for them to be able, you know, to exchange ideas, initiatives, or any particular particular solution uh, from science and technology perspective. Yes, and also their young age, it is also the age of their energetic uh, part of their life. Absolutely, lives, so yes, absolutely. Yes, it's, uh, that young age, like you also, you yes, know, sir. very dynamic, uh, very adaptable, and uh, fast learner, yes, all sir. of these things, emerging all the 10 countries plus uh, the, the three, uh, Korea, China, and Japan, you know, full of, uh, you know, uh, uh, potential, for them to unleash knowledge, skill, and other competence. And when they come and exchange, all of these things uh, will be uh, the insight for their uh, uh, science and technology in the, in the world in the future. Uh, at the same time, Professor, I mean, the idea, you know, that relate to environment, even for big, you know, uh, adult, mm -hmm. even for highly educated adult, it is still a bit hard for them to understand. So how do you compress, you know, the topic so that young people like them can understand and can engage, you know, productively across the culture? Of course, the environmental issues and the climate change can be difficult for the adults. But uh, I think the climate change is not just, not just the scientific uh, theory, but also it's our life. Climate change affects our lives, so they have to understand, they have to know, and they already know what kind of uh, changes we are experiencing around our uh, life. So uh, it's not just uh, the theories, but also it's our life. So they have to understand that they have to act on to change climate change, uh, the, the impacts. So what, what, what Professor is saying is that they're coming here, they don't only study about the data, they don't only study about the statistics, but they come here to immerse themselves in the environment, the environment itself, in order to, to understand. Yes, yes, so they have to understand the, the scientific theories and that they have to know the data, but also they have to know what kind of changes we are experiencing in our life and that they have to come up with ideas, what we can do as uh, like community, community members to change uh, these problems, to solve these problems. Yes, uh, environmental issue, it is known complex, like yes. you said. But the complexity, it doesn't mean that it's unsolvable. Yes, with, with more than, with almost 200 ideas, you know, and the, the, the potential is there also. So the idea is how to unleash their potential, their capability of solving uh, this complex of environmental issue. So even though the environmental issue is vast, but with 
more than uh, hundreds of ideas. And when those more than 100 ideas exchange, you know, it's it's uncountable multiplication in terms of idea how to solve this environmental issue. And this environmental issue is not a one week, uh, you know, uh, one week session. Uh, yeah, it's one week session to solve. Too. It's like long learning. It's for them, you know, to go on. Uh, when they start to understand from this young age, emerging 20 years, 10 years, or 20 years later, or 50 years later, you know, they are uh, working, uh, you know, as the expert, yes, as, as the expert, years. all yes. of this, you know, a lot of multiplication in terms of idea and knowledge uh, to solve future environment. So future. this is like a, a stepping stone for uh, them to re regionalize their efforts. Uh, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Sir. In the terminology of, uh, of the group, you say this, you know, event yes. uh -huh. encourage challenge, challenge gifted yes. gifted student uh -huh. so by the word by the terminology you know gifted what do yes. you mean yes. by gifted is it like they're the outstanding student in their class or maybe they get some medals so uh -huh. they become a gifted what is the definition of gifted uh, traditionally gifted gifted can mean like a, like a genius or like a highly intellectual people but uh, in recent days, uh, gifted is not just the intellectual or cognitive uh, the ch the geniuses, but also they're interested in science and technology and uh, how much they pursue their interest, their curiosity. Uh, so they, of course, they are like a genius or they are really smart, but also they have to be very uh, consistent and persistent in their understanding and their interest. So uh, I hope they can uh, continue their curiosity and that they have to find the new challenges. They have to look at the problems from the different perspectives and come up with ideas to solve these problems. Yeah. So we uh, we want to make uh, some uh, opportunities to them to think about different perspectives yeah, and uh, to communicate each other and uh, to look at the other perspectives. Yeah. It's uh, a long history of uh, gifted, you know, gifted, it's uh, we refer to a bright mind, yes. uh, very smart in science, in technology, in STEM major in particular, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So once they are smart, once they are bright in this uh, uh, field or major, uh, we consider as uh, gifted. So do you consider like, you know, they have to excel in, in a number of uh, subjects, for example, STEM subject, science, engineering, uh, something like that, math mathematics in order to be gifted, sir? Yes, in principle, but of yes, course sir. it has to be combined with other competent, you know, skill, yes, uh, communication, and many characters, you know, combined with all of that. Because unless, uh, even though you are very good in uh, mathematics, physics, or chemistry, but you are not, if you are not able to communicate are not able to share, are not able to exchange idea. It's it's somehow it's uh, not gifted also. You know yes, so that's why we bring uh, this uh, big uh, group of students from different country as to 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 unleash uh, their their, potential. their potentials. Yes. yes and so I mean uh, based on your observation for the past let's say uh, one or two session uh, prior to this session do you see that um, the student across the, the region of ASEAN and you know plus three also are they how how well are they more aware about the the, the complex issue of climate change sir? do you see the progress that they are they are more aware about that sir? you know uh, first you, you see that information right now with Gen Z in particular, they are, very they are, they are you know, <laughs> full in one smartphone, all information are, are there. So for me, it's undoubtedly that all the kids uh, know all of this issue even much better than the former generation. So yes, this environmental issue here and there, social media and mass media, all of this are, I think, very outreachable uh, to them uh, already. Mm -hmm. And uh, another, you know, the following question is that uh, because the education across ASEAN, as I remember, is not on the same level in terms of climate change uh, specifically. So how do you uh, manage, you know, 
the differences in, in, in education? I mean, how do you get all of them leveling at the same uh, at the same gap uh, at uh, the same? Yeah. yeah so we uh, we are not trying to oh, level okay. into their understanding. Oh, we uh, we better understand or. Uh, Thank their differences, diversity in their perspectives, and then the JSO, the APT JSO is tense, and then uh, it's been uh, we couldn't uh, do this event for the last five years because of the Corona, COVID, and other things. But uh, the ACGS, ASEAN Plus Three Center for the Gifted in Science, we also have other programs like a student camp and teacher workshops in Korea. So actually, last December we had a student camp and the teacher workshop in Korea and they also had similar activities and programs and then at the end of our camp they uh, students come up with ideas for this how to prevent how to uh, let uh, public know about the problems and the, how to solve the problems regarding the climate change. So uh, let's say like some students come up with some ideas of a new app to uh, to show the, the, the severity of the problem and how to solve ideas, what we can do as a citizen or our community members. So, so through the, those like projects, uh, we can uh, look, we can understand how they are uh, developing their ideas yeah. you know, throughout the. the and Professor, you know, the, the event is five days long, which is a bit, you know, many days, of course. <laughs> a bit short, but not too short. No. So you have like the indoor activity, the indoor, indoor lecture, indoor, indoor learning, mm -hmm. and also some uh, group work, and also mm -hmm. at the same time, on-site visit to uh, Kiryu water filtration, right. water filtration system uh -huh. station. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of this, uh, what do you hope them to achieve at the end of the event? Yes, uh, it's about the climate change and that we don't want to just uh, like a lecture. You know, in these days, you can have uh, like a great lectures on yep, the yep. internet, YouTube yep. and TED. So in, in addition to the great lectures, so we will also want to have them to have some hands-on experiments. Hands-on experience and then experiments and then look at the, some, uh, uh, the fields in person. So you can have lectures online, but you cannot have this experience online. That's why we come together and to visit this uh, uh, different sites. Even though it is a long way to come, but it's, it, it, it is still worth it. it. Yeah, it's worth it. Yes. 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 And also we are rotating the hosting countries. So, yeah. so the students will uh, came here, uh, Cambodia this year, but, but, but next year they can go other ASEAN countries like uh, Laos or Myanmar or even uh, in December they will come to Korea. Mm. to look at the different cultures and the, the different climate change. December this year. December this year. Oh. So they will uh, experience the different climate change effect, impact uh, in person. <laughs> yeah, in particular, you, you must see the level of, uh, of education. You see like there is some, some we always say, when you hear, you forget. When you see, you remember. When you do, you understand. When you play, you explore. So when all of these kids coming here, you see, they engage all uh, of their sense, you know. They go to expose to see the field. They, they are exchange idea. They practice, they get lecture. So all of uh, these sense are uh, outreach, uh, you know, through this uh, week. So you will see an amazing outcome uh, from that. I look at the agenda, and this year's uh, event focuses predominantly on water management, water resource, and of course, uh, Siem Reap you know, is connected to one of the largest lake in ASEAN, Tun Le Sab Lake. And also, you know, Siem Reap is a, a, a province of temples, and the temples depend largely on the water for the foundation and stuff like that. So is it... Uh, is it like, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, a correlation that you bring the water management topic to Siem Reap? Siem Reap, uh, well, the, for, first of all, the water is important, essential to our life, mm. like our earth and our body is composed yes. of like 60% of water, 60 or 70% of water, water is essential. So our ancient cultures, 
mostly they developed their culture, cul uh, cultures uh, near the water. Um, so, like uh, one of the example is uh, Cambodia. Yes, yes. <laughs> you have a like, long history of uh, culture and uh, uh, your history, and uh, you develop this. Uh, uh, very traditional and then the scientific understanding of the culture, how to manage the culture to part farming and then manage the water for our uh, life. So we want to learn from the old, ancient, traditional uh, knowledge, and then we also put the, some new knowledge uh, onto their your traditional history. Yeah. Yes. Yes, That's professor. why we, we chose Cambodia. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, all are related. Uh, it is a historical uh, city of uh, Cambodia. But don't forget that we have the Desam Lake. Mm. The Desam is a big lake that, yes, you know, partially supply uh, not just uh, fishery, tourism, uh, agriculture, and many uh, other values of the lake. So, this is a good historical site that allows students to uh, see uh, the real uh, situation on how climate is related to this water resource. So these are uh, strengths uh, in Cambodia with which to outreach uh, to the kids also. So because uh, the Lesap is one of the one, biggest one, uh, one of the water, water yeah. resource, that is why yes. the, prominent, uh, the, the, the predominant topic is about water in, in these sessions. Uh. <laughs> and Professor, maybe my last question also. You know, when they finish all of this, uh, is there any, you know, let's say, mechanism to follow their progress? You know, maybe, you know, not just, okay, you come here for five days and then that's all. Or do you follow them, you know, from year to year? maybe until they become you know an expert of something uh, we don't have like official like uh, mechanism. following mechanism oh, okay. but uh, we have this uh, acgs mm -hmm. center and uh, we all have the, the network of uh, all the representative from asean and across three countries so we do have uh, the annual events every mm -hmm. year yeah. so like we, alumnus we, events yeah, something alumnus. like that and yeah. then, uh, we also have like uh, uh, some SNS <laughs> so they can have the online networking so some of our like uh, all the, the previous uh, alumni so they met uh, like in uh, uh, like several years in the high, sc uh, high school and or college and universities so they met again so they uh, they work on the same project after they par participate in this event and then like five or six years later they go to university together and they met again and then they, yeah we have those cases <laughs> So, yes, professor. So we hope they, this is not just you know, like a five days event, but also this will like a, a lifelong, start. A yes. lifelong learning. Yes. Yeah, lifelong yes. learning. Yeah, this will be their uh, start of their network. So they are our future. So they will lead our science and technology in these areas. So they can be a leader, leaders, and then they will continue their yes. friendship and networking. Yeah. Oh, you know. Uh, the, the theme for this APTGSO 10 is raising up again climate change, you know. So, of course, uh, the knowledge spurring out of uh, uh, the one week event will not just be on climate change or raising up uh, again climate change. Uh, what we wish in general, in general for all students to learn is to exchange ideas. One we exchange idea, idea is not once anymore. It becoming two, becoming three, becoming ten, becoming thousands exponentially, uh, exponentially of ideas that a student can expose, can experience yes, uh, the the culture, the cultural difference, the level of education different, the perspective, uh, perspective different. So these are the insights yes. for their future in the world to. Uh, you know, to, to see uh, how ASEAN is different, yes. how students accept the different, how students uh, see uh, the other, uh, see different things. So these are the, the major, you know, uh, uh, expectation that we are doing during this uh, whole week. In principle, uh, the project ACGS, for instance, uh, ASEAN Secretariat also, there is always mechanism, you know, to recall uh, uh, 
uh, nurturing them and nurturing them uh, always. These are mechanism practice in ASEAN and also uh, APT JSO. Yes, sir. Uh, but for us, our big expectation, you know, uh, I'm sure almost all of uh, all of them gonna be scientists and engineers uh, in the future.